just coming here made me realize how much better an in-person conference still is. It just, it doesn't even compare. So it's been, it's been really great being here again. Okay, there we go. Uh, so I recently refactored our std move implementation in our code base. Um, why did I do that? Well, um, so here's the standard library implementation of move. Um, it takes anything and then it changes the reference to be an R value reference, essentially. Um, fine enough, so what's the problem? Well, the first one is this one. So we've got a function that is something, takes a vector by value, and then we've got a vector and we move that in. Well, what's wrong with this code? Um, this copies the vector because it's the move creates a const r value reference, which and const r value references they are not really a useful type. Like we don't want them, uh, so we want to prevent that. So we can just add a static assert in the move implementation that the thing you're passing in should be const. Um, that's simple enough. Um, so the second issue is a bit more subtle. So here we've got a function that wants to decorate a widget by adding some padding and a border, and it does that by taking the widget and moving it uh, around, and then in the end replacing it. Now there's a subtle bug there. If the uh, second line throws, then we've already moved from the widget. And this is a bit bad because like the caller didn't really expect us that we steal this value. Like it gave us mutable reference, but sort of expected that this, uh, this thing is back, uh, comes back again. Um, so we need to fix that by like using try catch around it and restore it in case there's an exception. Um, and like this problem is prevented in Rust, um, like so many things, because in Rust, when you've got a mutable reference, you cannot move out of it. Um, because in Rust, a mutable reference is like bore, like you bore a value. And when you bore a value, you're not really supposed to destroy it by moving around, right? Um, you better, if you handle it unsafely and destroy it, you better put something back in there. Um, and so we want to sort of emulate that behavior in C++. So when we have a local variable, we should be allowed to move it, right? That's fine. Um, likewise, if you have an R value argument, like that's also fine, like the caller has to really good ownership, we are allowed to move it further. But if you have an L value argument, well, that is potentially dangerous, uh, and that should require like a special opt-in. So we can only safely move if you have ownership. Um, Kevin, can you do that? Um, if, if you have ownership. And uh, so let's check that. So we want to prevent the move operation if the thing we are passing in is an L value reference. Um, so we add another st a static assert for the L value reference is. And, but the thing is that we can't do a static assert on the T itself um, because that, that will always be an L value reference. We need like the decal type of the thing. Um, and so we need a macro because macros are great. Um, the sort that gives us the decal type of the thing and then we can do the static assert on the L value reference. So let's just look at the example again. So here we're moving a local, decal type of local is widget. This is not an L value reference. We will safely move it, this is fine. Um, if you have an R value reference, decal type of that will be an R value reference. We will move it, this is fine. Uh, but if you have an L value reference, decal type of that is an L value reference, we trigger the static assert and require like a special opt in. And while this works, um, it's a bit, it has some edge cases like this one. So now we're moving from a member variable of an object. And that is potentially um, the pr problem here is the decal type of that thing is widget, and not widget L value reference, even though we're moving out of an L value reference only indirectly. Um, so to prevent that, we sort of need to ban that syntax and say that instead of move object dot member, you need to write move and then dot member. And the end result is the same, it's just that the decal type then works. Um, and this also applies if you want to move out of like a function call if that is properly overloaded. So in general, like the guideline should be that you, we, we're only allowed to move um, like a member of the expression, the member should be outside and not in the inside. Um, and so we want to check that, ensure that this guideline works by sort of static asserting that the expression we're passing in is an ID expression. So it's just the name of a variable and not a member axis. Um, so how do we figure out whether something is an ID expression? Well, we use the reflection, of course. And how do we use reflection? Well, we sort of use a macro. Like if you have a macro, we can convert that to a string. Uh, and then we can pass that string to check whether it is an ID expression. And if it's not one of those characters that make up an ID expression, right, then we static assert because that is wrong. Um, so what if you actually want to move out of an L value reference, but well, then you have this function move always. This is the same as the one earlier, it just doesn't need to check, and this is the special opt-in for the dangerous behavior. And uh, finally, like forward, forward sort of like a conditional move. So like if we have ownership, we want to move it, but if not, uh, then we want to keep it as is and copy. 
Um, so we have ownership for over local variables and L references, uh, uh, but not over L value references. So similar logic, and so the implementation of the move if own thing just uh, takes the decal type under some reference collapsing rules. I don't have time to get into that, um, but essentially, like th this is like an implementation of stood forward. We just called it move if own, and it behaves slightly differently with local variables. Um, but this is essentially forward of decal type of the thing, um, just like named accordingly because it does a conditional move. Um, of course, we also need to worry about ID expressions, the same thing as before, so we use the reflection trick again. And so to conclude, we've got three moves. And the one that moves owning things, but non-owning is an error. And the argument must be ID expression, then the conditional one that copies it, and then the move always on that always does it. Um, it's available at the things are library and we're also hiring. And I'm out of time, but I'm not being um, cut off, so I um, guess I'm keep talking. <laughs> <laughs>